Dread Hanumata. And my god, it's been a while. And this is my 100th episode. So I figured, since it's been a freaking year, basically since I've been able to regularly record anything, how about this? Update you guys. So I went ahead and wrote an outline, so I'll be glancing a little bit back and forth at that. And let's go on, shall we? So last year was hectic, incredibly hectic. Just, it was crazy, it was having a bad time. We had a couple friends that uh, ended up committing suicide, and that was really bad. I did get engaged with Kaltuna, Queen Kaltuna on Twitter. Um, we had some animals pass, unfortunately. And uh, we gave them proper burials, we dealt with their deaths, and that was really hard. A lot of this hit right at the beginning of the year, too. So, to start off the year with crap. We even tried going to a convention, and we tried our best just to have a good time and everything, but because of the tone of the year and everything, it just wasn't that good, and it was just hard to have a, have a good time. Um, Again, because why everything that happened, it was hectic. And it didn't help that we were living basically paycheck to paycheck. Not as bad to some people, but, you know, I was still getting to the end of my paycheck, still being worried that I might not be able to pay this bill this time, or might not have money to get gas by the end of my paycheck. I'm just hoping, but everything worked out, but it was scary. And part of the problem that made it even worse was my computer crapped out in, like, last March, so it's been a freaking year since I've been able to do an update, and I hate that. I hate it so much. I finally got a new PC, and I got it working after so long. And with that, I also ended up getting a new job, which helped me finance being able to have a new computer and fix it, which was great. I actually got the computer last year and I had problems getting it to work. But now it works great. It's awesome. And since then, since we had those few pets die, unfortunately, we did get some new pets, some of, some of which we rescued, one of which we were holding for a friend that we have now claimed as our own because we fell in love with her and he can't have a back. So, it's ours now. Uh, we also ended up getting a gym membership, which was pretty nice. Um, unfortunately, we can't go right now because it's specific reasons and they're not essential. So I've gained weight. I don't like it. But yeah, overall, last year was just overall depressing. And thank goodness this year started off just about amazing, despite being almost right at the beginning on the verge of World War III. And Australia being on fire. And then having the coronavirus come up and screw everything over. And a few other things. But for us, personally, it's been so much better than it did than it was yeah, last year. Like, it's amazing. Nobody near nobody close to us has died. Everything seems to be in good health. I just recently got over 200 subscribers. That's great. I love that. About February, late January, I was actually able to fix my computer. I had to mount a CPU fan. I finally got one to mount properly. So that way it sits on the CPU like it's supposed to instead of being uh, catty cornered. Uh, like I said, we've been going to the gym, so we've been a little bit more conscious of health. And unfortunately, the virus kind of put a little damper on that, and that's eh, a little depressing, but not nearly as bad as it was last year. So, with everything being good, once we get past this virus, if we do, we'll be able to go back to the gym. We were going about three times a week. We'll probably cut it down to a minimum one, but we'll probably try and go twice a week. Twice twice a week at least and that way we can try and get back to a little bit better health we'll see if we can't do a little bit at home as well be a little bit more active and everything 
since having the computer, I also ended up installing new editing software, which has done great. That's why I can edit these videos now. And uh, we did get a chance before the virus hit, we got to go to CamiCon in Birmingham. That was pretty good. Um, we got to meet a lot of really interesting people. Um, if you want, I can try and make a little bit of a video on that, kind of highlighting what we did and who we met, some things that got to happen. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was weird because it's a bigger con in the area. And we're not used to that. And the mentality of the Sheraton, 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 whatever. The, the hotel that it was uh, hosted at. Uh, they have a weird mentality about themselves, so we were a bit cautious of that, but it wasn't so bad. It was, it, we had a pretty fun time, we got some neat stuff, and since I had gotten a new job last year, we were actually able to afford it. We were, we were a lot more financially secure, which is great, because now we can do things we want to do. Aside from being on lockdown, uh, recently, uh, we also were able to get our roommate, uh, her first car, we helped her with that, and uh, she's gonna try and get into a better situation. Uh, and Kaltuna is finally on Twitter. That happened this year. That's relative. That's pretty new. I think that happened in March, the end of March, I think. And uh, feel free to check her out at uh, she's Sid at Queen Kaltuna on Twitter. So uh, let's go ahead and get back to the the elephant in the whole friggin' uh, world and all the nations right now except apparently Madagascar because <laughs> uh, people's uh, we don't need no people there apparently but holy crap my god why was toilet paper the thing people decided to get how did that become the fallout commodity in today's world like this, this virus is going on, it's got reg most regular cold symptoms, but what does everyone get? Toilet paper! And they hoard so much of it, like that's the thing that people got. Why? Ebola virus didn't sell this much, and it actually had explosive diarrhea as one of the symptoms. What the crap? I mean, I know it didn't affect us as much, but I mean, seriously, I, I kind of would've been like, eh, I guess I would probably want to have some toilet paper. No. Nope. Well, we have a cold. I'm going to the toilet paper. What is this, the friggin' Y2K episode of King of the Hill? Damn. Trying to get supplies has been a huge pain. And for us, we're just getting our regular supply. That's all we want. Things are kind of coming back to a sense of normality, so getting supplies isn't nearly the problem it's supposed it was. But, people are still hoarding. And then they go and try and return it, and they're like, no, we can't take returns because it might be contaminated. And good on them. Holy crap. All the people currently, during this lockdown, that still have to work, that have to deal with the behavior of the people that they have come into their establishments, they all deserve double time between retail, distribution, food services, other customer services that might be there, and especially medical services. They all deserve double time right now. If you're one of those people, you need double time. I don't actually need double time. I didn't even need Fred Stiva's check, which I still got, and I'm very appreciative. I am not complaining about that at all. Free money is great money. But that's not enough for some of these people that lost their jobs and stuff like that. 1200 might be enough to cover their one month's rent. And yet people are still treating all these customer service areas like crap and not understanding the risk that they're going through. Hopefully they get some kind of hazard pay. My god, they are unsung heroes. Because the crazy behavior that people have been exhibiting has turned us into a whole bunch of stupid people. And I think we're all sick of it. So let's go ahead and just get, get get past this topic. I don't want to talk anymore about it. I'm not monetized, so I'm not worried about getting demonetized. I might lose some relevancy, but it's whatever. It's an update video. I'm updating. And this was a topic that 
Watch shock back for a second. It makes me so freaking. I need to slow down. So, let me uh, elaborate a little bit on the new job I got. So, at my new job, I am essentially an avionics technician. And where I work at pays me like 30 bucks an hour. And I am very appreciative. I would consider that as quite as essential. The nature of my job says it is, which means I was still able to work, but they had to give us a mandatory week off with pay. That blew my mind. They didn't have to do that. It could have been without pay and we'd have to make up the difference, but they paid us anyway. We are so appreciative. And because of that, since I am in a particularly actionable position, I started to help to uh, kind of spread that to a few people that I know that may or may not need it, help little people out since I'm very fortunate right now and some people aren't, so I've been doing the charities and stuff, helping distribute that. Uh, as far as the job goes, there's not really much else that I can, that I'm allowed to say, be, like I said, because of the nature of the job. Uh, I don't want to elaborate too much more, but because of the job, I am financially secure. And that's probably the most important thing because that was one of the biggest things that was on my mind that was making me depressed. Now, about that new computer. You know what, let me start with the old computer. This is the old computer. And it crapped out on me. I don't know what happened. I don't know why. But I decided to take the hard drive out. Uh, I mean, it just got all kinds of screwed up, unfortunately. Uh, it lived a good life. It was what I was using for the longest time. And had a whopping 2 gig RAM. I could barely play Minecraft on my PC. But I mean, for what it gave me, it gave me a lot of years. It was I got it in 2011. So for it to have lasted all the way up until the beginning of last year, I think I got a lot out of it. And I really appreciate that um, I thought about taking everything out internally, getting rid of it, and then just kind of maybe mounting it on a wall like a shelf. I thought it'd be neat, but I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out. Now the new one, it's a beast. It's a customizable computer. I got it from a guy. All the equipment I got, I got for about like 250 bucks, because for him it just was no longer practical. Uh, so he sold it to me since I was in need of a computer, and I took it, and I eventually paid him before I started doing anything else with it. All I had to do was get a graphics card and some RAM, and everything else I had. And it's like $1,200, $1,400 setup. So, um... Now I have like 16 gig RAM, eight times more than I had before. Woo! And I'm so happy about that. Um, it's a uh, Ryzen 5 uh, 6 core 1500, uh, I don't know, something like that. Um, the motherboard is a. Uh... Hold on just a second, I can read it out to you because I can see through it now. It's a Gigabyte GA AX370 Gaming K7 motherboard. Um, I have two cards of 8 gig RAM. I have four slots, so that's awesome. I can't remember what video card. I can't see that from where I'm at. But uh, I got the uh, TI Evo 212 uh, cooling fan. And that's why I was finally able to mount properly, so I can use it. Uh, I have both the hard drive that he gave me with it, which is like two terabyte, and my old hard drive, which was a hundred, which was 300, 320 gigs. So since then, since fixing it, which I'm so glad I did, so happy about it, uh, I have downloaded new software for editing. I downloaded a Cyberlink editing program. I think it's like Ultimate 18 or something. And it's done great. It's really easy to use. And one of the best things I like, as opposed to Premiere Pro, is that it's a one-time payment of about 130 bucks. 
and I can't complain about that. A one-time payment, it'll pay for itself. The editing program is really easy to use. The nomenclature is kind of a bit weird uh, because, like, in order to use green screen, I have to go to what's called Pip Designer and use Chrome Key, which I guess makes enough sense. But I mean, kind of wish it would just have green screen so I can, you know, take out the background color that I need to. Like, this is all white. I want to take out that white. Just green screen effect, please. The computer's been working really well. And I can finally make videos, which is, to me, the godsend of these things. And, just as well as a new computer, I imagine you notice I have a new desk. And I'm loving it. Uh, this was actually suggested to me by Jorgogo. And I looked it up, it was like 90 bucks. And, I can't be more grateful about that, because that's cheap. And it's a really decent desk. Uh... I can probably find it again if I need to, so if you guys are looking for a desk kind of like this, let me know. It's L-shaped, and it's got a cabinet, it's got these little compartments, it's great for display purposes, and there's a lot of room. So, let me know. It's where I do all my YouTube work. Mostly. Speaking of YouTube, I've been meaning to say the plans of my channel, where it's gonna go and crap for a while. But, like, sorry about the crapping out, it doesn't really help my situation now, does it? Anyway, I have a nice little list of things in my outline that I wanted to go over. And I want to make sure I get this right. Now, a while back, I was asking you guys to help me make a new channel trailer. And I was going to have this initially as my first video back, but I got impatient. I didn't want to put anyone on a deadline or anything. So, I just said, yeah, whenever you can. Unfortunately, that means I only have, like, three people who've actually submitted um, the uh, clips I've requested. Out of 30 people? About 30 people that I asked, asked about it for? At least that I could get in contact with. Which is unfortunate, but it's whatever. Um... Uh, Hopefully, I'll get those clips sooner rather than later. Uh, I appreciate those of you who have given who have given me those clips. I can't thank you enough. Um, if not, I'll, end, I'll probably end up scrapping it for later and making a different kind of uh, trailer that I also thought of a while back. The other thing that I got is a uh, episode of Shameless Advertising for Sega Head that I've been working on. I've got the whole script down, and I got to the end of the script and started thinking about the part where I was saying thank you to Sega Head. And then I saw uh, Do You Nerd's video where they were doing an unboxing, and they said thank you, thank you to uh, well, they said Tom, not Sega Head, even though um, Lord corrected him, he never corrected himself. Dad. But, in any case, they were saying thank you, and that got me thinking, well, the video already, for the way I've made it, is longer than I expected to be, so why don't I throw in anyone who wants to say thank you, say thank you. Now, if I don't get, you know, too many clips, I'll just throw in what I do have. So, if anyone else wants to throw their hat into thanking Sega Head for the work he's done in the past four years, I think? four or five years. He's made a lot of videos, man. He's been on YouTube for a while, and he's done great. But, if you want to pitch it for that, fine. If you don't, it's whatever. I'm still going to make the video one way or another. Um, but other than that, I still plan to do some creepypasta. If you have any suggestions, throw them down below. By all means, I'll probably have a list somewhere. I'm still going to be making gaming videos, which is the bulk of my channel, probably. And I play those to have an experience. So even though they're kind of boring, and believe me, you're not insulting me by critiquing me on how boring my gaming videos may be. That's why I have a whole list of other things I can make content for. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like fodder for the channel, if you will. I have fun doing it, uh, and I have an end goal for it. And the idea is to have an experience with my audience while playing. 
So, hopefully that goes a little bit better as I progress and become better at commentating. Uh, so I have my questionnaire where I ask my audience questions and try and get answers down in the comments below. This doesn't go too terribly far. But, I mean, I, I like the idea anyone can answer any time, so it's not like I'm going to get rid of them anytime soon or anything. Of course, I have my bottom monologues, which is my vlog, blog, update, whatever. And I may have more series later. I'm going to have a series of discussion. i got a whole list of things that I can write down if you have any topics for me to talk about between YouTube, gaming, and other miscellaneous crap. Yeah, by all means, so let me know. Um, I'm completely open for suggestions. Um, one of the things I really want to do is collaborating. Now, for me, collaborating is a little bit of a weird thing. I'm, I plan to make a video about collaborating from my point of view, and I can actually do that now. I can collaborate. Or, if you guys just want a small clip from me to throw in for something or any voice work, let me know. I can do that. I have no problems with that. Uh, it doesn't have to be full collaboration. But if I do collaborate with anyone, I'm probably going to be helping with that. If it's on your channel, I'm going to try and do everything I can to get you what you need. There's the milestones that we have. Uh, 200 subscribers is a pretty nice milestone. I have to appreciate that. Uh, but I don't like doing too many milestone videos. Uh, I think this was more appropriate as opposed to 200 subscribers being my 100th video. Because a lot of people don't get that far, and it's a shame. But, uh, I, I finally got here. A lot of you guys that I know have gotten here. You guys are... Most of you guys are way past me. I mean, you guys are awesome. But... I probably won't make too many milestone videos, because the more milestones I make videos of, the less important it feels. And I don't want to make anyone subscribing to me or watching me feel unimportant. Everyone's important. I, no one has to watch my channel or anything, so the fact that people do is really important to me. Like I imagine it would be for you, I guess. I hope. Love you guys. That being said, I think I owe you guys an explanation on why I might subscribe to you guys, but not necessarily watch. Um, I can go a little bit more in depth on this in another video if you need me to. I'm not sure if I want to do that. But one of the things I subscribe for is, of course, if I enjoy the content, is the number one reason why I might subscribe. A uh, secondary reason is if I've made friends with you, I want to keep up with you. So, I've subscribed to a lot of channels that I haven't watched too much of. I've watched maybe a video or two, but it's really hard for me to really get into watching a channel more regularly. And I don't know why. I, I'm very hesitant. It, I'm trying to break that so that way I'm more apt to. Uh, look at videos, see videos, but the first thing I'm going to go for as far as content that I watch is what first interests me in my feed. Um, some videos I locked on to uh, and look for, but I wouldn't expect you guys, even if you're subscribed to me, I wouldn't necessarily expect you to watch my content. If, Especially if you're one of my friends and you're keeping up with me in the same light. I'm no, I'm not going to obligate anyone to watch my channel. I don't even obligate anyone to subscribe. No one has to do that. But I want to keep up with you guys. I want to know that you guys are still making videos. You guys are still growing. And I like to keep up with that growth, whether I watch it or not. So, every once in a while, I'll, still watch, I'll try and watch your channels and make sure I keep up. So that way I'm a little bit more supportive. Um... I feel like I've dropped the ball on a lot of this, so I want to be a lot more supportive. I've started donating to a couple Patreons, but in any case, I'm going to try and do a little bit better on supporting my local YouTubers and doing a little bit more research. So that way I can also help you guys 
if you guys have any questions, you're like, wait a minute, something about YouTube just really isn't making sense right now, I need someone to help me make sense of it. Well, I might be that person. I've done a lot of research, by all means. If you have any questions, ask me. If I don't know, I'll see what I can do to find out. If I don't know, I'll let you know. Uh, with YouTube, always comes a learning period, and I'm not sure if that learning period ever actually ends. Maybe sections of it end, like basic editing. You learn basic editing right off the bat, and that becomes a big staple on what helps you get videos out. So you get past that part, but then there's more in-depth stuff you learn. I don't think anything actually ever stops, but one of the harder things that I'm trying to get past in learning is recording alone. When you're recording alone, like especially for like a video game or something like that when you're doing a gaming episode, you don't have anyone to bounce off of, so you don't have anyone to talk to, so something like trying to figure something out to talk about is really hard for me to do because I don't know what you guys want to know about so I just continually I've done a lot of repetition in what I've talked about well especially during my Chrono Trigger gameplay uh, and I'm also a bit of a uh, fangirl when it comes to um, Chrono Trigger because it's an amazing game and I suggest you all play it right now in fact you know what watch like two or three episodes see what you like and go get it go go get it um, you know, at Nintendo on Twitter, go ahead and tell them, hey, put Chrono Trigger on the, uh, on the, uh, SNES channel for the Switch, just do it, just do it, it's, it'll make you lots of money for free service with the Nintendo membership and stuff. Don't judge me. Don't judge me! So DON'T JUDGE ME! I try to do what I can to be very interactive with my audience. Which is really hard, again, when you're alone recording. I don't know what you guys are going to think, but as I progress, I'm going to learn a lot more. Like, most of you guys are probably leagues ahead of me as far as being able to talk to your audience. Um, I'm not very good at talking to people. I've been better than I have been increasingly in the years, but I still suck at talking to people. So I want to be more engaging. I'm trying to be engaging. I swear. I swear. Um, one of the problems is with a game like Chrono, like Chrono Trigger, games like Metroid, and God, why did I start with a bunch of JRPGs? God, I'm too familiar with those, so I'm not walking into any of it like it's brand new. So it's not like I'm going, "What's that? Ah, oh, it's so cool. What should that look like?" I can't, I can't do that. I already know. I've played through this like a dozen times. But I want to experience it with you guys. I want to show you guys the game. So one of the problems is if you're too familiar with a game, it's easy to get stagnant. And I think that's a problem I'm having with my gameplay videos. So hopefully once I get a little bit further past, I'll probably do a little bit more action-y games. Um, um, I mean, I see my analytics. Trying to understand my analytics is also a nightmare. And I just don't really understand what I want to understand. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on there that because I don't get enough analytics I can't quite process it the way I want to so some videos are failing some videos are but I'm also having a lot of time in between videos that really doesn't help so I can't have consistency consistency is almost a requirement for YouTube but I gotta continue to do my research uh, if there's any topics you guys think I should research and talk about again let me know I will be happy to do this stuff I want to help build a community around being able to be good at YouTube instead of changing beast and crap. My god. But yeah, I do want to work with more people. I want to get to understand people. I don't... I haven't worked with too many other people, so... It's work for... Yeah, I want to work with more people. Just, come on, guys. Give me a chance. Give me a chance! I mean, if nothing else, um, I can help as an advisor. I've been Jorgogo's advisor ever, just like ever since like uh, a little after the first video he made. Ever since I saw his channel, and I found out, oh, he's local to me. I can actually hang out with him. I can talk to him. So I've been helping him with his channel a lot. I don't know if I've been uh, a bad influence or whatever, but 
let's face it, his channel, his channel started out as a pretty good gem. Um, I'm gonna help Kaltuna get equipment for her channel so that way she can start making videos on her own. Problem is that I have the only working computer, and it's the only thing that has pro enough specs that we can do that. So hopefully we'll be able to get her set up soon now that I'm financially stable. Um, I'm gonna have her on my channel a little bit more so that way she'll get a little bit more out of YouTube. Um, she enjoys making videos, we enjoy making videos, we had some humble beginnings, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I expect to see her more on this channel. Um, and, like I said earlier, we got engaged! Um, uh, you can actually see the clip in uh, that we had uh, from Fanaticon. Uh, Jorgogo uh, uploaded that video to my channel. And uh, in that, you get to see, you know, he was filming the part where I went and proposed. So that was really cool. We got to get engaged on stage. It was really cool. Uh, I'm going to try and put a clip in. And I didn't know this at the time, but someone took a really good picture. Uh, and hopefully you can see it right here. And I can't believe someone got that picture. That was awesome. It was, it was almost like a Fanaticon news article, and it was so cool. They have no idea who I am, and I'm surprised they never got a chance to uh, get back with me and talk to us about it. Um, but when will we get married, considering what's going on? I don't know. We wanted to try and get married this year, uh, being that we've been together for 10 years. But uh, under the circumstances, we don't quite have enough money saved up. So, and we still don't really know what we want to do entirely as far as what we want for the, for a wedding. But uh, we might try and get married next year, but we'll keep you posted on that. Most of the thing that's uh, had our concern is the new family we've gotten. But guess what? We have cats! Cats! This is, this is Calypso! Mm. Here's Calypso. She's my baby. I love you, Calypso. Oh, you're mad. Oh, this one's Gracie. This one's Gracie. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, she, she's awesome. Oh, good for her. They really don't like this. And this is Socks. Socks are boxers. No, oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Hey, oh, okay. And this year wine is Farah. Oh. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Squirt. This little girl is Xiao Miao Mi. I mean, it's little kitty in Chinese. I know, how creative. At least I hope it means that. We call her Xiao. And we also have that fishy boy named Boris. And our roommate also has a rabbit. So that's really cool. Uh, now be that as may, we have these new family members. That doesn't mean they replace the old family members lost. Um, that would be Baby, uh, Kaltuna's cat of about 18 years, if I remember right. Uh, so she had her most of her life, so it was heartbreaking when she, when she finally died. I actually had to come from work. Um, Buddy and Pakori were unfortunately short-lived. Uh, but we hope that we gave them the best time we could while they were here. Uh, we have them buried. Baby has her urn. And uh, Kaltuna tries to talk to them every day, every night. And they will be missed. Uh, I'm really glad that we were able to get this home. So that way they could live here. We've had, we've had this home for about two years. I'm so happy that about that. Um, the beginning was really messy, as I imagine any uh, first-time homeowner would probably find it. And still glad to be out on our own, in our own house, in our own space, where we can do the things we want, instead of the things that our parents think we want, or what they want, or whatever it is. We need to be our own people now. Our own people. Take that, parental guides. I love you. Uh, we've got the house pretty well furnished. Um, there might be some stuff we replace after a while. 
uh, new shelving, stuff like that. Most of, most of the problem we have right now is we have nowhere to display anything that we have. We still have a bunch of stuff just laying around. We don't know where to put it all. But we have gotten some new stuff. We got some new stuff on the way. And hopefully it'll all be good. It'll all turn out well. Um, at some point, we will hopefully either rebuild or have a new home built here. If I can get the money. Preferably, I would like something where we have some more rooms. Uh, I'd like to have just an office where I don't have to worry about all the jingles coming here and coming there. No, just a place I can close the door, I can record, we can record, whatever. It'd be great. I'd love that. I'd love that so much. But in due time, right? And hopefully I'll actually be able to get that house built around here. Uh, we'll have to out talk to some people. Uh, if you want me to cover more of that in a video or give you like an actual uh, home tour, uh, let me know and I'll do what I can to clean up and straighten up and everything. There's not much to it. So we've been donating to a few charities here and there, about once a month, maybe once every paycheck, and so far we've mainly donated stuff that we have a large sense of empathy for, things that we can understand from either a personal or empathetic point of view, or we can understand what makes it hard. A lot of times it's a lot closer to home. Uh, I, we've donated to the COVID-19 fund thing a few times, so that's that's nice. And we've also started donating to a few uh, people's Patreons. That's been really nice. And trying to help fund them so we can make sure they can do the stuff they want to do. And we actually have plans for donating to this and that. If you guys have any donations that you think would be good for us to donate to or to put out there for other people to donate to, you know, listen to comments below, shoot me a DM or something like that. And I'll consider putting it in the video. If nothing else, at least in the description. It can't hurt me much to put it in the description, right? But we want to try and help people. Uh, since we are in particularly actionable positions where I'm not hurting for money, I have financial stability, and I'm more fortunate than most right now, considering the circumstances. So, try and help where we can, right? Speaking of Patreon. In case it got far enough where we actually had people donating, a few creators and I decided, hey, they just sent a thing saying, everyone after this so-and-so date, you're going to actually have to pay to have that Patreon. And we decided, you know what, let's make ours beforehand. And so we did. So we went ahead and made ours just for the future. If you guys didn't get a chance, I don't know if they're actually charging people to have a Patreon, which ideally would be paid for by the people's subscriptions or whatever, the, uh, the, their patrons. But, uh, hopefully you don't have to succumb to that. Hopefully they either got rid of that and they're making enough money. I think the idea was to cut down on requiring ads on the site, maybe? I don't know. It does make it a lot less cluttered if they're able to do it that way. But, I'm not expecting anyone to actually donate. Uh... Especially since I am financially related, I would suggest donating to other creators who are less fortunate if you can, um, or creators that you just generally want to make sure they have your support. Uh, if possible, you're not expected to give anything away. Not everyone has that uh, ability to, so they have to hold money back to make sure they're able to do what they need to do. There's nothing wrong with that, by all means. Take care of yourself before you worry about taking care of others when you don't have to, when they have their own stuff to do as well. Um, in any other case, it, it's a great way to support uh, creators that you enjoy, and that's what I'm trying to do, so. Maybe some of you guys have pa Patreons that uh, I might be interested in. Let me know. I might see what I can do based on my own expenses or what I feel is uh, worth donating to. So about a year or so ago, uh, someone got me, Katsuna, and our roommate into D&D. &D. And so we've been playing, but he wasn't able to stay long enough. So what we ended up doing was, he taught me how to DM as best he could, and I've been going off ever since. So it's been really interesting being a DM in training. And uh, right now we're actually on Finds of Fandelver, or Fandelver, whichever, I don't know how it is, whichever one. It's our game, we can say however we want. Okay. 
but we're doing that. Now, the only problem is there's only three of us, which means there's two character people, there's two players, and then me being the DM. So I have, so I decided to insert my own character, so that way I didn't have to do too much modding on the difficulty class, but I can't use that character unless they're starting to deviate away from that plot, which makes a great way to uh, combat derailing in case that happens, or when your characters get lost. Uh, but it kind of sucks because I control that character, I already know what's going on, and I can't push that character to actually do those things because they're the player characters and I'm the DM. I, can't, I don't want to run the game like that. So it's been an interesting dynamic, so what we're trying to do is get to a point where we have consistency with players. But, uh, it'll happen as it happens. If you're not sure about Dungeons & Dragons D&D, &D, but you might want to get into it and you want to look a little bit up, I'd suggest watching Geeky Nate. He has a few videos explaining how D&D &D works, the basics of D&D, &D, how to roll up characters and stuff like that, and he's really good at articulating the mechanics of D&D. &D. And I strongly suggest that you check his channel out if you want to know how to play or think you might be interested. By all means. I know I like his videos, and I would definitely recommend them. And hopefully, if we get the chance, we'll be able to play a bit more. Uh, right now, it's been hectic considering the virus. But we do what we can, right? Other than that, at some point, uh, after this one, we'll probably play Curse of Strahd, and I think we have another campaign. After that, I really would like to try making, adding our own universe to the multiverse. I think it'd be really interesting. Um, but that might be a while from now. If you have any ideas of what you would do, or any particular universes that I might be interested in or basing off of, by all means, let me know below. I'd love to hear your input. It's just interesting. I think it'd be fun. Making a whole world, whole universe, it works like this. I don't know. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So, rounding out the video. Uh, I went on Twitter and asked for, a few, for questions for q and A. Q &A. I didn't expect I'd get many, so I figured it'd be perfect. So, nice long update video like this. Ending on a few Q&A questions. It was perfect. And I got just that. So it was awesome. So without further ado, at Geeky Nate asks, what is your favorite and worst games ever? And it's really hard for me to think of a favorite game because of how categories work. So it's really difficult. But if I had to put a uh, top handful of games, I don't know, top three or something, definitely Chrono Trigger, uh, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, or Ocarina of Time. I like Ocarina of Time for some different reasons than most people would as far as the top games. But I don't think by itself it's a masterpiece, but I can get into that into another video. Um, I guess Tales of Symphonia. That's a pretty good game. Long stranding and everything. There's not too many games that I don't like. Anything with uh, mostly Nintendo titles. Uh, I guess I'd have to put those at uh, some of my top games. Uh, series, Star Fox, Metroid, stuff like that. I hope, that, I hope that's kind of satisfying. As far as worst games, however, I do not like really any games based off movies. Just something about it doesn't work. Like, you take an hour and a half movie and you expand it to like between four and eight hour gameplay, and it just doesn't work. It really doesn't. Some games it kinda does, but most games it's just... No, it's not how the world's gonna work. It's just ridiculous. Um, they're not all bad, but I don't like those games. I don't care for sports games. 
I mean, to me, they all feel the same. Like, if you get one game from an era, like, let's say it's 2013, and you get this set of sports games, you know, the different sports games for that era, I would say it'd probably be about now that you'd want to get any new ones, because to me, in between, it's going to be mostly the same. They all seem to be only slightly tweaked with slightly better mechanics, and I just can't tell the difference. I've played a little bit, and I don't care. I'm not much of a sports fan. So, it doesn't help either. I just don't, I don't care. I don't care as much for racing games. I like Mario Kart and stuff, but as a whole, I, I'm not really into Need for Speed. I'm not really into Forza, 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 whatever. I don't really care about that either. Uh, I guess one game that I thought was crap was uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban for GameCube. I thought that was kind of messy. I mean, I guess it wasn't too bad, it was just hard to care, hard to be invested. But that's another example of games based off movies that I don't think worked. I hope that I hope that answers your question to some satisfactory. At Jorgogo Art asks, What's the one movie you can think of that's so bad you can't hate it for whatever reason? I looked at this question on Twitter, and I don't think I've actually shown him yet, but mine is a, mine is a guilty pleasure, if you will. I don't think the movie is good by any means, really bad, but I love showing it to other people and making them suffer with me. This, I'm talking about, if you can see that, Ginger Dead Man 2. The Passion of the Crust. I have a guilty pleasure with this game. I love listening. I love seeing people watch it and just cringe and cringe. It's got Gary Busey in it. It's got a horrible B-movie stuff. Everything's really fake. It knows that it's fake. It's just horrible all around. Like, making a B-movie that's knowing it's a B-movie doesn't make it any less of a B-movie. Go figure. So I love showing this to people. And, uh... I don't know. Making them break down. Making them think about their lives. It, it's just a lot of fun. I'm gonna make you watch this, Jordan. I'm gonna make you freaking watch this. At Lauren Draws 01 asks, What and or who inspires you? Well, you guys inspire me a lot. Seeing you guys making content, seeing people that watch me, uh, being able to react to comments, that inspires me a lot. But something about that isn't nearly as satisfactory hearing it from the other end, is it? No, you want something a little bit more in depth. So when I look to greater channels, and I see them starting from here, and then way up here, I love the fact that we can see what they were what they were down here because that's what inspires me is the fact that it's far more relatable. It's far more far easier to see someone being a successful YouTuber than say a successful movie or TV celebrity. It just feels more practical. I can understand it a lot more because we're the ones who have to do all the work, especially at the beginning. Some people eventually get to the point where they can hire people or get help. But us, right here, are we are graphite-level YouTubers, opal-level YouTubers. We have little to nothing to try and make videos on. And we have to fund everything ourselves. So we have to either shoot the video. If you draw, you have to do all the drawings. If you have to... You have to edit everything. You have to compose... So maybe you have to compose music. You have to have your own equipment. You have to do everything yourself. And like, just editing alone. Some people put 80 hours into a single video to get it out. My god, it's nuts. I mean, I've seen some of your guys' videos. You guys put so much time into it, a lot of time. 
uh, I've been fortunate enough where the, most of my video formats are pretty simple as far as editing is concerned. I don't have to put that much. Like, my gaming videos, if I really wanted to, I could probably pump a gaming video out every two hours, given a uh, regular work day. So I could put like four videos out a day or so. Uh, I'm probably even closer than that because I don't have to do much for what I'm trying to accomplish. But uh, something like my Evil Overlords list, that took me, at, in editing alone, it took me about a solid five and a half hours. I was really proud of that, by the way. Really proud of that. Now, that's some of the most in-depth editing that I've done, which isn't too much. I mean, I could have spent a lot more time on it and gotten a lot better. And I was also doing experimenting, but man, there's a lot of time that goes into it. And having to do that work and understand that work and understanding people that have gotten to that point up here, my god, that's inspirational. That is awesome. We can do that. You can do that. That's our potential. Like, holy crap, that's awesome. I want that. I want that so bad. So bad. <laughs> now, I, hope, I hope that answers your question to uh, Decent Satisfactory. At RSA Frosty asks, what are your what are your thoughts on a mass collab on where we play Scribble.io and have a great time? Also, congrats. Thank you, Frosty. Um So when you posted this, I didn't initially know what this was. So I did do some exploring. So for those of you who don't know, it's like digital pictionary online. And Honestly, I, the idea of it, I think, would be really neat. Get a whole bunch of people together to do this game. And I clicked into it for a little bit and left. But, um, yeah, uh, you're given, I think, uh, three word cards or something like that, and you have to draw something based off one of those cards, and everyone else has to guess it. And the sooner you guess it, the more points you get, I, I believe. And then it just cycles through everyone. Whoever has the uh, most points in the end wins. And I think it's a really neat idea. But I suck balls at drawing. I, I really suck. So, I don't know how successful I'll be. I probably won't get too much unless I'm good at guessing. Um, but I would like to do a mass collab. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, and if you're the one proposing the collab, my suggestion would be that it should go on your channel. I'll be fine with that. Just let me know what you would need to do. Uh, get with whoever, and then after that, we just gotta try and get a time where we can do that. You know, let us know how long you think the video should be. And we'll figure something out, right? I, I, I would definitely like that. Alright, and last question. At Queen Kaltuna asks, Where do you think your channel will go? Frankly, I don't know where it will go. I would think that the only place is up at this point, but there is ways to go down. I could lose the channel or whatever, but where I want it to go, where I think it'll go, as far as it possibly can. I want to see how far it goes. I would love to encapsulate the whole nation, the whole world, with the content that I put out. The idea that, oh, I don't really want attention, I think is asinine if you're a content creator. Of course you want attention. I know I want attention. I want to show off a little bit. I want to have fun. I want to influence people, be better people. So, where will my channel go? Where do I think it'll go? Oh, I think it'll go up. I think it'll be slow, but I think I can go far. I'm in a very good position right now. I can finally make videos on my own terms, so I don't have to worry about as much about what's around me. And let's face it, I got you to help me. So, I hope that answers your question. Well, I think that'll do it for, uh... This really friggin' 
long update video. And I hope I've cleared up anything that's happened. Um, you guys have been great to me, and I really appreciate you guys. And just a little personal thing that, um, the point of my channel is to try and show people their potential. They can't, I can't guarantee your success, but if you don't try, you won't succeed. That potential is always there, and that's what I strive for. Always remember, you have potential. Now, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to be my buddy. If you have any suggestions for future content or tips, let me know in the comments below. And always remember, you have potential.